Good evening. This is the monthly television show of the Gay Liberation Network. So welcome to the program on uh, CAN TV, Chicago Access Network Television. Tonight we're going to be talking about uh, uh, community control of the police, uh, how to hold the police accountable. Um, specifically, uh, we will uh, be discussing the ordinance that's been introduced into the Chicago City Council by the openly gay alderman Carlos Ramirez Rosa, uh, a member of our community, a, a city council member who is not uh, committed to promoting uh, Rahm Emanuel's corporate agenda, I'm pleased to say. Um, we will be talking about CPAC, the Civilian Police Accountability Council. Uh, my guest tonight is Mike Saviwe Elliott. Did I get that right? You got it right. Saviwe Elliott, a longtime labor, community, and police accountability activist and organizer, is originally from Detroit, Michigan. Mike is a retired member of United Auto Workers Local 551. He remains very active in Chicago's labor and Black Lives Matter movements. He is currently the Labor Committee Chair of the Chicago Alliance Against Racist and Political Repression and a leader in the movement to establish an all-elected civilian police, police accountability council, or CPAC. Uh, before we get into uh, CPAC, uh, perhaps um, our viewers are aware that our mayor, Rahm Emanuel, uh, uh, reacting to tremendous pressure, uh, uh, has uh, uh, talked about his own reform of the uh, Chicago Police Department to make it somehow more accountable. Uh, one commentator said that what Emmanuel is proposing to do is to uh, rearrange the, the letters in the alphabet soup. <laughs> now, now we, 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 we've got IPRA, we've had uh, 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 several other uh, um, uh, yeah. boards. The OPS. The OPS, yeah. uh, supposedly independent of political influence, but uh, we know better. Well, what, what's yeah. the problem with Emmanuel's ordinance? <laughs> Well, uh, right off the bat, the problem is he's going to have the power to appoint folks. So that in itself creates a huge problem because, you know, as we have seen in the past, when Chicago mayors uh, appoint people, they also have those folks become accountable to the mayor and beholden to the mayor. So we don't want, uh, we don't want anyone who is controlled by the mayor uh, to have the responsibility of overseeing how the police operate in Chicago. Right. So right. That's, the, that's the problem right off the top. L let me say that this, this is a call-in show. Uh, the number is on, the, on your screen. Uh, but please uh, give us about 10 minutes to get into our subject here uh, uh, before making any, any calls. And after that, we'll be happy to take your calls. Well, let's talk about... Mm -hmm. uh, uh, CPAC, the Civilian Police Accountability Council. Uh, uh, what what are the are the, the, the main provisions of, of, of CPAC, and how, how does it differ from uh, uh, from control of the uh, uh, of the police by the uh, the mayor of Chicago? Yes, um, the CPAC was which is the acronym for Civilian Police Accountability Council uh, will actually establish a democratic process, a transparent process in the city of Chicago, that's rare everybody, uh, where citizens, uh, residents from each of the 22 police districts in the city of Chicago will elect a representative to sit on a citywide council that will have uh, major powers. Uh, first of all, CPAC will abolish the police board, and it will abolish the independent, so-called independent uh, police review authority, IPRA. And it will establish um, a body made up of people elected from the community who will have the power to um, 
for instance, uh, rewrite the rules of conduct uh, of the police, um, rewrite their their um, uh, their their codes and and how they behave in our communities. It have the power to appoint and fire to select and fire the police superintendent. That's uh, to negotiate the FOP contract. Um, and so just those brief highlights right there um, gives you an idea of how empowered this, this body will be. Um, but, but most importantly, they won't be beholden, the members of this council won't be beholden to the mayor or the powers that be. Um, they will be responsible to the people that elected them. And so as we, as we sit here today, CPAC is now being viewed across the nation as one of the most uh, radical ideas for holding the police accountable for their crimes. It is the only ordinance in the United States that's calling for an all-elected civilian police accountability council. And so activists around the nation are watching us and, and hoping that, that we'll be successful. And if it, and if, and if it happens, we can, we'll see it uh, explode across the nation. Now, the, these elections would, mm -hmm. would, would occur in all of the 22 police districts, is that correct? Yes, it would, it would occur at the same time as the automatic elections. Okay. And, and people holding office will be there for a four-year term, and they'll have staff. And um, a percentage of the police budget will go toward IPRA. Okay, we, we have some uh, 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 photographs that, mm -hmm. that, that we'd like to run here now. This is a, uh, uh, a shot of, of, of some young activists uh, uh, carrying signs promoting CPAC, the, 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 the Civilian uh, Police Accountability uh, Council, uh, and, and you see the other sign there, Community mm -hmm. Control. Of, of the police. Beautiful photo. Th th this is a beautiful photo <laughs> and uh, it, it, uh, uh, it was taken from the Black Agenda Report and the uh, executive editor of Black Agenda Report, uh, Glenn Ford, I, I think is, is one of the more insightful political commentators mm -hmm. uh, around. And, and he, he talked about something that I think is really important here. Um, uh, and we, we were discussing this a little bit before we went on air, that there's a grassroots movement that's behind uh, CPAC, this demand for civilian control. Um, Ford said, real movements have profound lasting effects on the world views of a broad strata of, of the populations from which they emerge. Lives are no longer simply lived, they are set in motion towards a goal and against an oppressor. The movement that went under the general heading of Black Lives Matter has permeated the consciousness of young black people, reigniting the seemingly dead coals of a previous mass movement that was violently crushed by the United States government, I would add, two generations ago. The black radical tradition reemerges in an era when capitalism is in permanent fatal crisis and U.S. empire thrashes about like a vampire exposed at sunrise. Wow. I, I just yeah. love that statement. And That's what, a beautiful statement. I, 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 I want to join uh, Glenn Ford and I, um, uh, uh, I think Mike Elliott would as well mm -hmm. in, in, in recognizing the, the, the importance of, 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 the, uh, of, of the, the young black uh, uh, people uh, and others uh, uh, who, uh, who have... Uh, uh, brought the whole issue of police accountability to, uh, to the fore. Yeah, uh, without question. I, I can't tell you how proud I am and uh, how much I have learned from, uh, from the young activists today, uh, particularly young black, uh, the young black activists in Chicago who I work with very closely. Um, they have, what they have created is something that will be uh, a permanent part of our landscape. They have changed the narrative in this nation. And, and it, it, has, it has expanded 
and and broaden into a lot of areas. You know, uh, it's like they have redefined violence. You know, violence like poverty is violence, right. and violence begets violence. Um, the 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 closing of the schools, the unemployment, the the uh, the shutting down of of health of mental health facilities and and preschools for kids and uh, all of these uh, are very clearly defined by the Black Lives Matter movement as being acts of violence against us. That's even outside of the uh, police violence that we face on a daily basis in the black community. Well, I think that's really important. And there, there, there's a question I want to put to you in a minute about the hiring of more cops, you know, but let, let, let's let's hold that. And uh, we uh, we have some announcements uh, mm. that we want to run. Yes. So um, coming up on September 14th, there's going to be a dem mass demonstration at Chicago City Hall on the second floor beginning at 9 a.m. with a press conference. Uh, we're going to de be demanding that Chicago police be held accountable, that that the city council people who have held hearings throughout throughout the city of Chicago uh, and preceded, and those hearings were preceded by the uh, the so-called task force on police accountability, also holding uh, hearings throughout the city, um, uh, allegedly to get citizens' input on how police accountability should look. Well, uh, they have ignored that because at each one of those hearings that they held at every single location, the call was for CPAC, uh, community control of the police. The people in all those communities came out and spoke and said that uh, we don't want any more appointments from the mayor. We want to have uh, input and control of the police ourselves. So people have demanded community control of the police and it's been ignored by the city council members by those people that participated in the police task force, led by Lori Lightfoot, uh, they have ignored all of those citizens' calls and demands at every single location. So we're taking it to them at City Hall uh, to make it loud and clear right there where they're going to be meeting at, uh, that we want community control of the police through an elected civilian police accountability council. We won't accept anything less than CPAC. No more appointments from the mayor. And to find out more about what we're doing, please go to our website, uh, stoppolicecrimes.com, to get more information and more, more details about uh, what we do. All right, let, let's, um, let's consider the, the, uh, the, the call by, uh, by, by Rahm Emanuel to yeah. put more cops on, on the street. Wow. I mean, what, what, what is that going to accomplish? <laughs> it's going to accomplish about as much as his, his uh, introduction of uh, a thousand more tasers. <laughs> you know, he is, he's, al he's already, uh, you know, called for a thousand more tasers. <laughs> so a thousand more police, we consider that as a threat. I mean... That's, that's just increasing the threat on the black community, period. First of all, you know, the reason why policing is failing here is because they're using the wrong approach. They're, they're using the wrong concept. They think that if they can send soldiers into a community that they will solve the problem. Well, that hasn't solved any problems in, in any war around the, country, around the world, and, and it won't solve any problems in Chicago, it's going to increase the animosity towards police. Uh, these police uh, are, are trained to be soldiers and not to be public servants. And so to send uh, a thousand more soldiers into the black community is just going to spark more outrage and, and create a, a, a broader gap uh, between police and community relations. Well, and you mentioned uh, uh, a few minutes ago uh, the, the, the long list of, uh, of, uh, of uh, activities that constitute violence in the communities of color, you know, uh, certainly including poverty. 
uh, and the lack of services, the shutting down of mental health clinics and the like, wouldn't it be better to spend the money on, 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 uh, 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 on activities uh, actually serving the, the, the needs of the people rather than to spend the money on hiring more, uh, uh, yeah. the more uh, militarized uh, uh, cops? Yeah, exactly. To patrol the communities? It, exactly. And as I'm looking at uh, Charlene Carruthers on, on, on the screen right now, uh, um, BYP 100 and members of the Black Lives Matter community have been calling for the defunding of police yeah. for those very reasons. So that those funds, uh, which actually are 40% of the Chicago city's budget, um, the, the Black Lives Matter movement has been calling for defunding the police so that those funds can be better used to service people. Um, and, you know, right now, as we see the way that they're using the funds for police, is just uh, you know they're they're fun they're funding a military, they're funding the military that is occupying our community, right. and those funds could be much better used if they were uh, uh, directed toward services that will help people. Tell us a little bit more about the grassroots uh, 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 basis for yes. for the uh, the, uh, the the uh, for. For CPAC. Yes. We're very fortunate to have uh, a very knowledgeable and experienced uh, field organizer. His name is Frank Chapman. And he educated us on, a, on the approach of, of first building support in the community. And that's what we've been doing over the last three and a half years. So our approach is that rather than... Uh, go to the politicians and ask them to support uh, CPAC. We went to the people, and we explained CPAC to the people and, and, and got them involved. And so we're in, we're in the communities uh, every week uh, at, at 10 different locations throughout uh, the city of Chicago, educating people, also hearing, hearing their complaints about the police, but... Our solution to, um, as we explain to people in the community, the solution is to get involved. And so we're, you know, we, we have a, a broad range of volunteers, uh, uh, black, white, Latino, uh, young and old, who work with us on a daily basis um, to make CPAC a reality. And, and we have built a groundswell of support, which which the mayor and the city council people have encountered wherever they went throughout the city, they've encountered that support that we've built. Um, and, so, and so now with, with, the, uh, with the people's alderman, uh, Carlos Ramirez Rosa, introducing uh, CPAC as an ordinance on July 20th, uh, they could now no longer... Uh, Accused of of being on the on the fringe, like some fringe radicals, what they were trying to paint us as before. They now have CPAC uh, because of the support of the people uh, as an ordinance that's sitting on their table, and we expect them to uh, to pass it because uh, if they don't, then they're not truly the representatives of the people. If 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 they truly represent the people, then they will they will support what the people have been asking for. And the people have been asking for CPAC uh, because we have diligently worked on building that ground support. Uh, none of the on other ordinances that are being introduced to city council have the support of the people. And that was very evident at all of, the, all of the hearings that the city council held throughout the city. It was, it was quite evident, very clear, that the community members who attended all of those events were back in CPAC 100%. There were no more appointments. We want an elected civilian police accountability council. Well, I, I think that kind of grassroots organizing is really mm. key. It's it really key because it, 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 it provides people an opportunity, it seems to me, mm. to be self-empowered. 
There you, you go. Know, instead of looking to politicians, yes. you know, whether, whether it's Barack Obama mm -hmm. uh, or Hillary Clinton or Bernie Sanders, uh, uh, I mean, we need to look to ourselves and to our allies to, yes. to, uh, uh, to build a movement. And then if the politicians don't respond, push them out of the way. You know? Exactly. So what, what kind of uh, 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 support do you have uh, uh, in the council? Well, we have um, nine members um, signed on to CPAC. They're all members of the Progressive Caucus of the City Council. And as you know, there's 50 members of the city council, so we're we are a long ways away of, uh, of, of really gaining the, the amount of votes that we need. But people are pressuring their aldermen to support CPAC, Good. as I speak. Good. The people that, that we've been working with. Good. Yes. Uh, let me interrupt. We do have a call, and we've got just enough time to get it in here. Okay. Uh, all right, caller, you're on CAN TV. Yes, I wanted to say, I think I speak for a great many Chicagoans who certainly do support uh, certain principles that CPAC offers. But at the same time, when uh, at the core of one's principles, there is this notion that we simply defund law enforcement or the Chicago police, uh, that somehow we could live in a city where without policing, where essentially a law enforcement would be defunded, which is what it would mean, and yet we could expect to walk the streets without fear. Uh, you know, that's just an absurd notion. There needs to be reform, but there needs to be commonsensical reform. I know at least a half dozen uh, victims of crime here, and I live on the Gold Coast in Chicago. And, and thank God for the police. There are at least two instances there where the police were there to, to save those individuals' lives. The idea that we should defund police is just absurd. Okay, thank you, caller. What, what, well, what do you say to that, Mike? Well, I, I respect the, the caller's opinion. Um, so... I understand that, that, you know, people are in fear of crime that goes on in their community. Um, you have to understand that that the, 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 the people who are asking that the police be defunded are in fear of their lives from the police. Um, it's been quite evident uh, what the, how the police have behaved uh, over the past few years or, or, since, uh, or since the technology of of phone videos have have uh, have existed, uh, it, it can now and it can now no longer be denied how the police operate and how they disrespect uh, people of color. Well, I think I think uh, uh, if mm -hmm. if CPAC is an, uh, is enacted, then there there'll, there'll be a way mm -hmm. uh, to monitor the behavior of of, of police in all yeah. areas of the city. Yeah. Uh, we need to get get. Get, get to our announcements here because we are uh, coming to the close of the program. Okay, so yes. Uh, so, so once again, we're demanding that an elected civilian police accountability council uh, be enacted in the city of Chicago because of the long history of, of uh, police brutality and, and police not being held accountable. So on the September 14th, we will be demanding that at City Hall at 9 a.m. on September 14th. We'll be on the second floor uh, where the city council meets. And we were, we're asking everyone to come and join us at City Hall, which is at uh, 1, 121 North LaSalle. So come on out, support us. Let's, let's change how the police operate in this city. Uh, we need community control of the police. That's the only solution. All right, thank you, Mike. And thank you for watching the program.